Nevada, the great silver state and the gold. New tales of Nevada, the stories, people working hard to make a home. Old tales of Nevada. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Glad to have you with us this week. We've got a great show, an important show. It's all about a new discovery up on the Comstock. So stay tuned. We'll have the whole story right after this. Hi, I'm Hugh Roy Marshall from the Marshall Men, Virginia City and Reno, Nevada. Come to introduce you to the Let Him Run Wild Horse Mustang Series, which depicts the wild mustangs herd running free, mare in its foal, the wild mustangs fighting for love. These ingots are a limited edition double struck product on one toy ounce three pine silver and are only available at the Marshall Mint, Virginia City, or Reno, Nevada. Get your piece of history today. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Men's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full-service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride right on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. Welcome, everybody, to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show. And as usual, uh, with me today is Uroy Marshall, my good buddy, my co-host, and uh, our special guest today, actually. So, Uroy, we look forward to the conversation with you today. And then on my left side, your right side, I guess, <laughs> I don't know how that works, and Larry Elliott. And he's here because he's done something really special for you, yeah. Roy, and, and for his uh, work up on the Comstock. So we, we're going to yeah. hear from Larry. So Larry, welcome to the show. The Marshall welcome, Load, welcome. we're called. The Marshall yeah, Load, there that's you go. right. There you go. Yeah. We're here today to talk about a very historic, scientific, important discovery up on the Comstock. And as we all know, the Comstock uh, it was the catalyst for everything that has happened around the area here in northern Nevada. If it wasn't Definitely. for the Comstock, where would it be, right? You right? It was the beginning of the whole area and the Industrial Revolution. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. We're the most industrialized city between San Francisco and Salt mm -hmm. Lake City. So uh, we really set the stage for a lot of things to happen by the discovery of uh, gold and silver up there on the Comstock. Uh, tell us, though, you uh, right before we get into that, why mm -hmm. we do this show. This is our 270th or so episode, and uh, it's been a great run, and, and we have a great purpose. So tell us what that is. You betcha. Well, we all make a mark on the earth, and some of us deeper, some of us not so deep. Sometimes historic discoveries are made, too. But uh, we all have a tale to tell. And Old Tales of Nevada was developed to more or less reward uh, our community leaders and community entrepreneurs of the area and including the rest of the state, too, yeah. uh, for, for what has happened here. And historically, what happened here, a lot of people don't realize that after the Civil War, the United States was totally broke, and we owed more than what we were worth to France, Germany, and England. Exactly. And it was the money from the Comstock which bailed out Abraham Lincoln and uh, uh, started the United States of America's uh, ability to pay off its debts and hence form a country. Country. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was such an important discovery up here that they even put the uh, the uh, Carson, the Carson Mint, Carson City Mint, and Carson City yeah. Mint, and mm -hmm. uh, those coins that have come out of that mint are worth more than any other uh, silver dollar coin in the United States. Isn't that right? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I don't think any of the other mints are as important as. Well, this they're one. the most rare, but the reason why you know. Mr. Morgan uh, uh, was a developer of what's called the Morgan dollar, mm -hmm. which coin collectors and everybody refer to, which is your common uh, collectible silver dollar. Right. But the silver dollar itself was uh, the change that was used to make change for the gold money that was already in circulation 
which came from the Philadelphia Mint, which was the first mint in right. the United States. Yep, that's and right. And then the Carson City Mint's development uh, was essential during that early industrial period for mm -hmm. producing silver. Yeah, pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. So uh, we're a very important part of the country, and we want to remind people of that with the show, mm -hmm. uh, not only for the past, but yep. what's happening presently and about the future and that's part of our show today is what's happening presently and mm -hmm. what the future is going to be for northern nevada and especially for uh the comstock area um most definitely yeah you know the comstock uh, as we have often talked has has uh, been a place of amazing discoveries and we know that uh, silver and gold uh, was huge up there it, it was probably the biggest bonanza in in the nation if not the world right well, the big one location? was a 450 foot high by about 220 foot wide uh, solid silver gold mass. Yeah. That began at the 1126 level uh, in the Con Virginia mine, which is right out by the arena, by the hotel. Right. And in fact, it's, <laughs> it's on area that you yeah. own. Yeah. So, and in that time, from 1859 to 1882, uh, now this is in their. Uh, uh, you know, counting of dollars back in those three hundred five million dollars mm -hmm. was extracted from that area there, that very concentrated area, and just an amazing amount of wealth came out of there, and so that was the beginning, and then over time, uh, as we want to start talking about, uh, we have been able because of technology to find more than just gold and silver up there, right? You're right. Well, originally, uh, as we're talking about platinum, <clears throat> platinum was used by the assayers in the early days as the cupel that they melted their metals in in order to do fire assay tests. Oh, okay. Because they had no ability to melt it. Okay. And it stayed firm and dense uh, during the process. So. Oh. That was the only use of platinum in the early days. Okay, they, so they had identified platinum they had in identified the early days. in 1803. Right, uh, but they didn't have it um, as a business or a mining operation up on the Comstock because of technology, right? They didn't even well, know what it, was, what silver, it was. Silver was so important during those days that, you know, and later, too, Thomas Edison and all of our major developers... Uh, 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 Ford and uh, Mr. Blackstone, who developed the tires, the Firestone Tire Company. Uh, they all went to the Comstock because of the discovery of silver uh -huh. and its scientific importance right. to the industrialization of the United States. It was the silverware. It was the stuff you used for pictures. Right. It was... Uh, uh, Jewelry. <laughs> yeah. And, and the fact that it, it, that it is antimicrobial, mm -hmm. that it repels germs... I mean, to those guys in those days, was that was a scientific marvel. Yeah, really. This stuff here, the Germans don't want to stay, stick to it. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it just had so many uses, right, yeah. back in the day. But here's mm -hmm. platinum um, mm -hmm. uh, and other metals mm -hmm. that were discarded because they they did, couldn't identify it up there uh, with, the, with the mining operations. They weren't even concerned about it. So a lot of that uh, other metals, the other metals, they just went out into the... Into the dumps, into the tailings, yeah. and sat there for years, right? You're well, right? the blue clay uh, contains a large quantity of platinum. Yeah. Uh, and uh, is present really throughout the area. Uh, almost anywhere uh, uh, along the Comstock areas, um, if you dig down one to three feet, you hit blue clay. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Blue it's clay is an amazing miracle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's everywhere out there. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you you uh, the, the the announcement we want to make here uh, mm -hmm. today is that you and your mining operation has uh, uh, discovered that there are large amounts of, of platinum there, and we we are so excited about that. In fact, uh, we've done a video mm -hmm. which explains how you found it, which is very interesting. And Larry's on set with us because yeah. Larry. Uh, came up with some uh, a, a great intro, a song, a musical com a composite of, of uh, Hugh Roy out there in the desert. Yeah, finding this this amazing this discovery. strike. Yes, and it, we call it the Marshall Load. That's right. You know, the Comstock Load had mm -hmm. its uh, uh, notoriety, but I think the Marshall Load is also going to be 
just as important as time goes on. But anyway, Larry did a song. Yeah. And so before we get into the video, let's play this uh, this song, okay, you Larry? Betcha. Okay, yeah. okay. And by right. tuition, this is called The Martial Love. The Martial Love. Go. So here you go, folks, there for you your go. enjoyment. First time heard on TV, Larry Elliott and the Marshall Lowe. Under blue Nevada sky, the hot sun in his eye, he royal walked the elk and wild horse trail. Studded earth and sand, the shovel in his hand. Struck Bonanza, gold and silver, platinum ore. Was it old miner's code for good luck to name the strike? So we called it the Marshall Lowe. Golden Trail, Silver Rose, Platinum V. Marshall Road, Golden Trail, Silver Road, so we called it the Marshall Road. All right. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Larry, that, that's just a, a beautiful thing to do for... You, Roy. Well, I was yeah, inspired I after I saw that video you're that you're going to show later in the show, you know. Yeah. I mean, you was out there in in the, I mean, he's, he's doing his thing like, like I've always known he, he had the, had, <laughs> had the expertise and the background, but going back to his, his grandfather and his father and the whole thing. And then, uh, and then, of course... You have to make it kind of peppy at the end there, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, you did a great job. That's yeah. a good job. Yeah. Golden Road, yeah. Silver Trail. <laughs> well, you know, you, Roy, and, and, and the Marshall Lowe deserve that kind of attention. Oh, yeah. uh, you, Roy, uh, I've asked him in the past uh, how many claims, uh, mining claims you have in Nevada. And you have actual th thousands of uh, mining claims. You're probably the most prolific mining uh, or claim owner in the state of Nevada. You probably have more claims than anybody in the state of Nevada as a private concern. Well, we probably have, for sure, more patented claims. More patented <laughs> claims. That's a, that's amazing. And when and when you say patent, just briefly, what is that when you say a patented claim? Well, you own it? it? It's basically the surface and the subsurface. Oh, okay. So you own it all. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And now you have a lot of that up in, uh, Virginia, City. in the Virginia City. Everything north of Union Street, Union Street. pretty much is... Yeah. Uroy Marshall territory, so don't go, mess with Uroy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen. Um, you know the song is great. And, yeah. and by the way, I, I want to thank Cesar Perez. It, it, he was the he was the genius behind doing me twice on there and putting Uroy up in the yes. corner and yeah. stuff. I call I call it the Larry Brothers. The Larry Brothers. Because in case you folks didn't notice, there's two of me on there. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought maybe my glasses. Uh, we, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. Why don't we take a break here, and we'll come back. And as soon as we come back, we're gonna show the video we did, which shows you, Roy, and how he discovered platinum on the Comstock. So we'll be back with more of Old Tales of Nevada, past and present, right after this. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop and Visitor Center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. Hi, I'm Paula. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock Events in Round Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come, Come see us. us. 
Somewhere in Time is a place to find what will be treasured for all time. A store full of the unexpected, high-end die-cast models, vintage and antique furniture, Fenton glassware, kerosene lamps, toy trains, vintage neon, a new home decor selection, brothel and casino memorabilia, jewelry creations, and cameras in large collections throughout the store. Bring the family and find the unexpected that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time on Virginia Street in Reno. Hello, and welcome to Boutique Elegante. Today we're showing our fabulous collection of sweaters for fall, teaming them with fabulous denims in all colors. For a day in the city, wonderful nubby jackets, a perfect black and white tweed suit, and day into evening in a three-piece black opera suit. For an evening out, dinner or the opera, more exquisite fashions for that very special occasion. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. We're back here in Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. What a great show so far, Larry. I enjoyed your musical uh, yeah. introduction there uh, about the Comstock, not the Comstock load, but the Marshall load. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, talking with uh, you, Roy Marshall, who's normally on set with us as our uh, co-host, but uh, today our special guest because of what he found up there on the Comstock. And we're talking about platinum uh, especially, but along with that there are other other discoveries that could be made in, uh, regarding the different kind of precious metals up there and digital metals. But uh, along the way here in the last couple of months, we've been focused on platinum and uh, we produced a video, right, you, Roy? Yeah. Which really tells the whole story in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's play let's that video, video sure, and to. then we'll come back and, and we'll talk about more of the scientific side mm -hmm. of that discovery, okay? So here's the video about the Marshall Lode up on the Comstock Lode in Virginia City. Hello, I'm John O'Brien, and I'm standing in the very historic town of Virginia City, Nevada, the home of the Comstock Lode, the biggest mining strike in U.S. history. In fact, the biggest silver strike in U.S. history was right here in Virginia City. Home of the historic Comstock Lode, one of the most important mining discoveries in American history. It was the first silver discovery in the United States. Certainly, it was the most dramatic event in Nevada's 19th century history. During the Comstock's heyday, hundreds of mines and mills were operating. Mines like the Ofer, the Con Virginia, the Savage, just to mention a few. Combined, these mines and others produced over $305 million between 1859 to 1882. During that period, new technology and mining innovations were introduced, which helped the industry become more productive. The introduction of square set support systems, the V&T Railroad, and the Sutro Tunnel were a few that made it possible. However, many of today's technologies were not present then. Consequently, much of the rich ore was left undiscovered and discarded. Using today's science and technology, an additional important source of Comstock wealth has been unearthed. Today, we are proud to announce the dramatic, historic, and exciting discovery of platinum on the Comstock load. That's right, platinum ore was overlooked by the early miners and was recently discovered accidentally by the man we are going to talk to now. His name is Uroy Marshall. His company is called HRM Enterprises Mine Division, which began exploring and developing mining claims here in 1979. The first thing I asked Mr. Marshall was where he was raised and what sparked his interest in exploration. I was born in Houston, Texas, and uh, my granddad, Heroy Cohen, found the second largest oil field, I mean, the sixth largest oil field and the second largest natural gas field on the planet. We found that Mr. Marshall is a well-educated man and has attained many awards and achievements. Well, I, I attended five different universities and then started a graduate school at the University of St. Thomas. One of my biggest awards uh, uh, came from uh, uh, various kings over in the Middle East. 
And I, I have those, those in my museum down in, in uh, Reno. Mr. Marshall's first mining operation was overseas. Well, the first mine we did was uh, for the Sultanate of Oman in Oman uh, in 1973. And uh, we developed a $280 million copper, silver, gold, chromite, platinum deposit there, which is still running. After the project in the Middle East was completed, Mr. Marshall came to Nevada. Well, I moved out to Nevada and put in about seven and a half miles of underground tunnels uh, out in, in a place called Ione, Nevada, which used to be the county seat of Nye County. And then here at the Comstock, I put in about three and a half miles of tunnels of which we're going to go and, and stand on top of one in a few minutes. He is rumored to have more privately owned mining claims in Nevada than anybody else. Well, in total, I have a little over, over 2,000 claims. According to Mr. Marshall, those mining operations have yielded large amounts of gold and silver, but his most important and historic discovery of platinum was made quite by accident. Very, very much so by accident. And uh, uh, we need to take a look at the site out there at the Ophir mine, which was the original discovery here in Virginia City. Mr. Marshall took us to the exact location of the discovery and explained what happened that historic day. Yeah, I was walking here and showed you the mine down below. There. I was thinking about this 250,000 tons on top of the tunnel that's down below here that's not good for my tunnel, <laughs> which cost me $9 million to put in. Wow. So uh, uh, that's what I was doing. I just thought, well, I'll, I'll pick up a couple pieces of country rock, just like the rock that's over there or whatever, and send it in for assay to see if there's anything in the country rock or, or the rock where the ore body was carried. And one assay was 2.4 ounces per ton, the other was one and a half ounces per ton of platinum content. According to him, there have been skeptics about platinum in the Comstock. Well, actually, that was, that was 1985. Uh -huh. And that was in the upper Ophir area uh, where we had our mine up there. And uh, we thought we had a, a platinum content in that material. But this has now turned into a tremendous bonanza because we have it not only from here, but all the way back to our Citro mine, almost a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. Since that original assay was done, mm -hmm. proving that was platinum, you've done many more. Thousands of assays. Thousands of assays. Mr. Marshall also explained the rarity of finding platinum in the United States. Only one other in Stillwater, Montana, which is the, uh, the Stillwater Palladium Platinum Mine. I see. Okay. That's the only other platinum mine in the United States. Mr. Marshall further explained what the impact of such a discovery will have on the local community, the U.S., and the world. Well, it's not only the additional mine of the platinum, but platinum and palladium themselves have now become our digital metal. Whereas when silver was discovered here, as you know, they use it for about everything. Right. Now platinum is the metal of our age. It's what the computer boys are putting in the chips to make the chips do different things. As anticipated, there will be many questions about this historic discovery of platinum on the Comstock, so I asked Mr. Marshall how one could get more information. Well, we're opening a, uh, uh, a, a combination Marshall Mint uh, Nevada State Refinery uh, location in Reno okay. where they'll be able to see pictures of all of this too. But they can go to our website uh, at the Marshall Mint or at the Consolidated Virginia Mining Company. We want to thank Mr. Marshall for letting the world know about this new and historic discovery of platinum on the Comstock. Truly, the Comstock load just got richer. You write, what a, what a, what a discovery. And it was all by accident. Totally accident. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it was so much fun being up there on that. Uh, yeah. I just picked up three or four rocks and threw them in a bucket just to see what was here. And then Cynthia said, yeah. you should take it down and get an acid because yeah, it acid, looks so yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we sent it off and had one, one ounce, a little better than one ounce of platinum in one and two. Over two and a half ounces in the other. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Yeah. You're just out there kicking rocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we we uh, we know that was mm -hmm. the beginning of it. That was the beginning. And of then it. you mm -hmm. went further after it you found out it was there, mm -hmm. and you've actually found different formations of mm -hmm. platinum, right? Explain what what we're finding up there, because there are three different yeah. areas of concern. Well, well, where we were standing on the over uh, dump is overlying the Con Virginia Tunnel, which I put in during the 80s, uh -huh. which has this all over the wall rock, which wow. for many years I thought was just plain pyrites, uh -huh. which, uh, of 
course, was rather disgusting. <laughs> yeah, because it's worth but nothing. But then later on, we found that this is, is really covered in native platinum. That's uh, native platinum I'm looking na at. There. Native platinum on the pyrite. Okay, yeah. when you say yeah. native platinum. That means that it's the element itself. Okay. It's a, it's a metal itself. It's pure. Whereas this has has all kinds of stuff in it. We, uh -huh. don't, we don't know what all is in this, but this is a platinum uh, specimen. I see. And where well, that was found in a different place, right? In well, these area? are these are found all over the dumps. Uh, which, all over the dumps. Which weathered uh, out of the blue clay that was thrown on the dump. Okay, so originally surrounded by blue clay. By blue clay, and then it, yeah. Because of rains and snow and melting, mm -hmm. uh, it leached itself out, basically. Yeah, and all of this, all this, I cleaned the clay out of in order to be able to see the specimen. I see. This is you now see, a whole see, different look. You see, this look. got the, some of the, the clay still in it. Yeah. In there. Now, what I'm seeing here is yeah. um, a lot less glowing, I guess, for it's, yeah. a, it's a more of a grayish well, this color. Is, this was the beginning of what occurred after this was done. Oh, I see. In other words, the clay polished this stuff more and more and turned it actually into large nuggets of yeah. platinum-bearing minerals uh, or pure platinum. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, like three major areas and three different formations mm -hmm. of the platinum, right? And then There's also a... in the granite, it's occurring too. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. uh, with the, the pyrites as a, as a mineral uh, called sperolite. Okay. Which is a platinum arsenide. Okay, so this is different from that. Yeah, but this might weather into native platinum in time. I see. You see in the area or back into the blue clay. Okay. But the blue clay is, is, is dominant throughout the area because of the tremendous amount of uh, 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 brecciation or uh, ripping open of the earth that occurred at the Comstock, which created these very unusual uh, brecciated yeah. specimens yeah. next to the, the blue clay. Oh, it's amazing, huh? Yeah. What so, a special place the Comstock is. Yeah, it's a phenomenal uh, place of, uh, of of tremendous mineral wealth. Yeah, yeah. Is there still a lot of um, earthquake activity up there? Is is are things there are, but it's it, it, it it's loose to the point to where it's it's in a, a slippage situation. So oh, uh, basically, you have two ways it can move this way. Or this way. Oh, okay. And I understand that actually Mount Davidson is sort of sliding down to, would that be the east? It's sliding down towards it's the city. It's causing everything to slide to the east. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. So that causes more and more we uh, call opportunities. That, we call that raking to the east, actually, right. in geologic terms. Okay, very good. Well, yeah. listen, you're right. We're going to take a yep. break here. And we'll uh, sit down and, and enjoy the rest of the show you uh, from our chairs. But uh, this is an amazing, amazing yeah. discovery. The, mm -hmm. the Marshall really Road has been un up on the Comstock. Un very unusual we'll be material. back with more right after this. The beautiful fall colors are being duplicated in the fall collection of fashions at Boutique Elegante. Sweaters are either in the crayon colors for fall or soft muted shades in bark and beige. For our cold winter days, jackets and vests are the perfect dancer. Full fur and full leather are the strong fabrics for this season. Team them with maxi skirts for a beautiful seasonal look. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Hi, I'm Chris from Pastime at Summer in Time. Are you looking for that one-of-a-kind gift that you can't find in the big department store? I have something for all occasions. Got stuff? Need to know whether or not it has value or how to sell it? We can help with that, too. Come and see me Tuesday or Wednesday at Pastime in Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street in Reno. Just ask for Chris. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at deluxetravelltd.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. 
Hi, I'm Paula. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock in Center on Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques, and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come, Come see, see us. us. Hi, I'm Hugh Roy Marshall from the Marshall Mint, Virginia City and Reno, Nevada. Come to introduce you to the Let Him Run Wild Horse Mustang Series. Which depicts the wild mustangs herd running free, mare in its fold, the wild mustangs fighting for love. These ingots are a limited edition double struck product on one toy ounce three pine silver and are only available at the Marshall Mint, Virginia City or Reno, Nevada. Get your piece of history today. Welcome back to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Just to remind everybody who we are, I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show. Our special guest today is you, Roy Marshall, hey, and Johnny. my other special guest, Larry Elliott. And we're focused on the Comstock, but in particular, the Marshall Load, of which Larry did a, uh, a great song for us. Yeah. Yes. And that is going to Appreciate be global. It. We're going to send that I'm all over the you. place. It's going to go by. All, all we needed was a cat. I think it'll it. be on the top ten mm -hmm. on iTunes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I might add that, that like when you when, when you go to the map here, yeah. you always mentioned several times about how how the uh, the highway is actually on on top of the the, the gold and the silver. Yeah. There go the chorus line that, that I added in there, G golden golden road silver trail. Ah, mm -hmm. I get it now. Yeah, all right. See, the more you explain it, the more we not to mention the fact it's more catchy. we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, the roads roads were essential because they, that's. Where the mines actually were started, right in the road. That's right. There was oh, there was yeah, no yeah, the, town the, to speak of. Yeah, it was all mines. Originally, yeah, they tried. They looked right in the road. Yeah, was a good yeah. spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, in our last segment, we were standing up by the uh, specimens, mm -hmm. and we know that the platinum is there. But to give people a better idea, you Roy, mm -hmm. let's bring the map up here, yep. and you can show exactly. Mm -hmm. Where you're finding all of this uh, precious metal? You bet. Well, this metal. is this is Virginia City right here, uh -huh. and the the cemetery is right in here, and the Ofer mine is right next to it. Oh, I see. So we basically have found the blue clay from the the Convergenia CNC Ofer area, right down past the Sierra Nevada mine, past the Utah mine, which is located here, over to the Citro mine, and we found that this ends. Up against hard rock right here. Okay, so that's kind of southeast but you're looking. Basically, at. all this is blue clay, and it starts between about a, a foot and a half to four feet under the surface, and it covers this whole area okay. of blue clay. And this it's overlying the units that that the blue clay came from, mm -hmm. and it's, those are the load units which provided the rare metals that are in the blue clay. I see. Okay. As that deteriorated. So, and, so the platinum is, is it right in that core area there, huh? And yeah. largely due to the tremendous runoffs that occurred off of the tops of these hills, down the canyonways, mm -hmm. and then into Seven Mile Canyon, and then back out to Six Mile Canyon, and, and during that period of time, tremendous overflows of water came over the surface, but Tremendous underground meteoric waters had already come up, bringing these minerals up from the surface. So right. it tumbled, uh, in some cases, the platinum into platinum nuggets, which are extremely rare, and some of these are extremely large. Yeah. And as an aside, uh, mm -hmm. as you uh, finding the platinum and you're drilling and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, you're finding a tremendous amount of gold and silver as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in yeah. fact, that's huge over towards this way, right? Yeah. Away from that core area there? Oh, yeah. Well, for the most part, uh, that's what I've been interested in is, is this hill right here. Cedar Hill, uh, during geologic uh, times, was the largest hill in the whole area, much bigger than Mount Davidson, and was a major hill in the whole area. I see. And as uh, geologists have explained to me, that the tremendous strike slip which occurred here... Uh, was the cause of, of this tremendous mineralization. Yeah. And uh, it moved 1,500 feet from Orleans Hill 
back over to this area strike slip wise. So when it moved, it obviously killed everything in the area <laughs> and then brought up these funky looking uh, minerals yeah. along these areas of, uh, of abrasiation and then tumbled uh, uh, materials in, in the nuggets, I in see. the clay. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when you think about platinum, uh, just going back to the history a little bit, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not a metal that's uh, brand new to miners or to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you say that there were a couple of uh, guys. Hold that picture up there, you yeah. boy. Um, this is Mr. Johnson and Mr. Matthew from uh, the early 1800s. Early 1800s. So they were the first two that identified the metal itself, right? They were the first two to identify the metal and what it could be used for. Uh huh. And that's a good question. What are the uses of platinum? What makes it so valuable today? Its major major uses is as a catalyst. A in, catalyst in many different uh, chemical reactions. Okay. So, for example, in a car. Mm -hmm. They use a catalytic converter, converter right? Yeah. And that and that's a big use for platinum, am, am I right? Platinum and palladium. Pla platinum and palladium. Palladium can replace platinum in, in many instances, and it, and it used to when it was cheaper. Ah. Now, now palladium is more expensive than platinum. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what other uses do we have uh, besides being a catalyst? Do they use it in jewelry? Do they use it for machine parts? Uh, platinum. Platinum's uh, greatest use is... In, uh, in in the jewelry field is in the mounting of diamonds. Oh, mounting of diamonds, okay. Or of expensive, uh, you know, rare stones. Okay. So there are a lot of uses for platinum, but there aren't a lot of places to find platinum, right? Uh, you were well, telling today, me... Today it's our space-age metal, whereas before, silver has been our digital metal for many years. Yes. And uh, silver is... Is in almost every digital device. Platinum's usage is, is, is space age, in that it's a source of uh, uh, modifying computer chips uh, to do different tasks with, with the use of other uh, rare metals. Yeah. So there's a great need for platinum, mm -hmm. but the challenge is there aren't very many places to find it. For example, in the United States, it's very the, the real uh, viable. Mine is only found in Montana, right? Yeah, Stillwater, Montana. Stillwater, Montana, about 40 miles outside the of... The earliest uh, mine, uh, minings of platinum in the United States began in 1934 in Alaska on the beaches. Uh, and it still has been about the only source of uh, native platinum uh, anywhere on the North American really? continent. Really? Yeah, you were telling me that you can find traces of platinum mm -hmm. all along the West Coast, nuggets, come all yeah. along the Pacific yeah. Coast, but not in great quantities. In very small quantities. To make it a viable mm -hmm. um, operation for a mine, mm -hmm. whereas the Stillwater area, as well as this area now, is, is an area where you can find great quantities of it, which makes it so important, as, yeah. as important as the big Bonanza strike back in the 1800s, in 1859. Uh, so uh, that's why we're focused on it today, right? Uh, well, this, this deposit seems to be proving to be, as we've gotten more technologically, you know, uh, into this and uh, past our early stage of discovery, that uh, this is more of a gold platinum deposit. Ah, okay. In, instead of a uh, palladium platinum deposit. Ah, okay, okay. And uh, the reason... Why it's that way is is because there's really tremendous amounts of gold with the platinum. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. But there's not any silver. <laughs> when, when you, the, the rich silver and gold, like, you know, in that piece there or whatever, yeah. it has no platinum at all. None, yeah, none. It's, that's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The so, rich, rich silver and gold in the has no platinum. Yeah, at so, all. so unique, so unique, yeah. uh, uh, an area up there. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you find the platinum and... and we didn't mention it when we were standing by the specimens mm -hmm. there, but there are other metals that you're uh, identifying that could be classified as precious metals, too, that aren't found in any other place in the United States. Maybe California might be one area. There's a mine there, but as far as uh, other places, no, right? It's really, it's really a meteoric origin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because these metals formed only when the uh, gases and and uh, things could be released from the core of the earth. Yeah, very The unique. core of the earth is made up of those rare metal stuff. Sure, sure. Iridium and all that. 
because it melts at 4,444 degrees. Yeah. And, it's hot in the firecracker, that's for sure. In fact, that's one reason they never s yeah. used it, because they couldn't get a furnace hot enough to do it. You could never melt it. Yeah, uh -huh. never melt it. Yeah. yeah. So where where is the refinery for platinum? Where where do you have something well, like some this? In, there's one in Utah. Uh -huh. There's a uh, high-tech uh, one in, in Corpus Christi. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, Johnson Matthey uh, is still a major... Uh, producer of the okay. metal. So that company originated with them is Canada, still viable. Canada, around the Sudbury, Ontario area, Cobalt, uh, uh, Canada, and a couple of other places produce platinum also. Okay. As, okay. Mostly as a byproduct of copper. Ah, product. byproduct of copper. So it attaches itself to a lot of it different kinds. It likes copper. Of, it likes copper, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it <laughs> likes copper. That's the other major uh, source of it is in the mines from Arizona. Mm. In the copper deposits. Okay, very good. What about in Montana? You know, around Butte, all kinds of copper, malignant. Mostly, that's associated with silver. That's silver up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. So now, to open this up mm -hmm. to a mining operation, mm -hmm. how far away are we in that regard? How much more scientific uh, exploration do you have to do before you can actually open it up to? use well basically we need to do three more discovery drill holes we've done five discovery drill holes right on to by the Ofer dump uh-huh uh -huh. and uh basically found it about 30 to 40 feet down in, wow. e in each of those holes wow. down to about six seven hundred feet so uh we'll we'll go in and then further make the discovery of this but as i've been telling you all along our our interests are, are in a big bonanza deposit that is in Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill, there. Yeah. yeah, so in order to, if you were ever to extract the pl uh, platinum, uh, would you do it as an open cut or would you do we it do as We do it as a small operation here and uh, uh, and keep it a small operation and very high grade uh, and basically try and catch every bit of whatever is in there. I see. And would you bring somebody else in? I know you've often talked about people in Houston who are involved with the superconductivity down there. And definitely. I guess oh, definitely. Yeah. Platinum is, yeah. uh, is, a, is, a good, is a good metal for that. NASA and the Pentagon and uh, the Texas Center for Superconductivity and three other major laboratories in the United States will work with me. Okay, very good, very mm -hmm. good. Well, listen, we have to take another break, but yep. this uh, this map really uh, nicely exposes the area for us so that we understand where this major Martian yeah. load is is located yeah. at. Yeah. If it was just a small streak of it or whatever, and uh, and you know, it would be one thing, but being in all the blue clay in the Comstock is a tremendous amount of material. All right. Well, listen, we're going to yeah. come back with the <laughs> final segment here in Old Tales of Nevada. Past and present, more about the Marshall Load right after this. You have got to come and see our bridal designer collection here at Precision Diamonds. We bought our building, lower the overhead. That means everyday low prices to you. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop and Visitor Center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. Somewhere in Time is the place to find what will be treasured for all time. A store full of the unexpected, high-end die-cast models, vintage and antique furniture, Fenton glassware, kerosene lamps, toy trains, vintage neon, a new home decor selection, brothel and casino memorabilia, jewelry creations, and cameras in large collections throughout the store. Bring the family and find the unexpected that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time on Virginia Street in Reno. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Man's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full-service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle. 
We're the Bikers Bike Shop. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel. So stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. You have got to come and see our bridal designer collection here at Precision Diamonds. We bought our building, lower the overhead. That means everyday low prices to you. Have you heard? It's time for the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Show at the Livestock Event Center on Wells Avenue. Gifts, antiques, collectibles, arts and crafts, raffles. Fun for the whole family. We're back here for our last segment of Old Tales of Nevada, past and present for this week. And uh, what a historic show it is because we've announced to the world now that there is a Marshall Lode oh, up yeah. on the Comstock. Larry, you've been sitting here. You've been hearing the whole story. Well, you, and, and you, you guys are jamming. I know, you know, we're, 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 <laughs> musical terminology. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I didn't want to leave you out, but I'm sure you've generated some thoughts oh, yeah. uh, for, for you, Roy. You know, as we uh, go along here, so uh, what were you going to uh, well, expand uh, on here? I, I, w I was going to ask that, that, like, of course, in my mind, it, it, I, I fly forward, you know, and, and, and let's level the mountains and, and move Virginia City down to the flats, you know, <laughs> uh, where it's out of the way and where we get all this out of, out of there and, and get rid of our national debt. <laughs> Wouldn't you that know? be nice, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they love to spend money in Washington, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Larry, really, the, the, the real truth of the matter is is that the properties that we have that make up 80% of the town site of Virginia City oh. really, really need help underground. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, with our uh, uh, abilities to redo the area with very valuable deposits money, that it will save Virginia City because it is slipping. Yeah, well, you know, as we it, talk, it's slipping. It's, it's slipping. It's, it's slipping. just from 20, a, a, 25 feet since 181859. 18, wow. That's oh, amazing. Man. 25 in fact, feet. In fact, your assay office, or which is now the Marshall Mint, mm -hmm. but that assay office, that location was a street level yeah. in the 1800s, whereas mm -hmm. now you got to yeah. go up five steps to get into your store, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, up, up at the Enterprise, right near the parking yeah. uh, the parking lot, you go downstairs, and there's there's places where the windows used to be. Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a, Well, is there ever a danger, Uroy, of Mount Davidson just coming down all at once? I suppose with a big enough quake, Mount that could Davidson happen. Davidson is really what's hanging, is what's holding on to it. Oh, I yeah. see. Mount Davidson is called an intrusive rock unit. Okay. And that means that it went down and it was pushed up later. Okay. And it was that intrusive nature of Mount Davidson, which is the tell, telling tale of the true geology of the area. Oh, okay. Okay. Because this unit that is carrying the platinum and associated with it is called the TKPI unit, mm -hmm. Tertiary Cape Peak Anasite. Okay. <laughs> which the, the state government always considered it could only be extrusive, uh -huh. uh, but we found that it is intrusive also. So is there any chance uh, at some point where Virginia City would be moved because of all the value that sits underground there? That uh, No, we would we would re-bolster it and uh, re-structure re, uh, uh, the uh, uh, underground area. I see. Okay. Yeah, because Square Set, which was the technology for making those tunnels underground, yeah. Tremendous technology for the day and still used uh, in modern times. But with all the movement of the earth there, at some point those well, it's timbers tend to fail. Well, it's so that were the, the fronts of the buildings in Virginia City are, are bolstered and made up of pig iron. Ah. Uh -huh. And uh, pig iron was used in the development of the vertical, major vertical shafts uh, in, in the Convergenia the CNC shaft, and the Ophir. So they'll, they're fine. So, so the vertical shaft is going to hold on to everything. I see. Okay, so... And, so yeah. It, it's the areas the around it, just like it's the areas between the buildings in Virginia City that are in danger 
of collapsing. Yeah, because they're just brick or sandstone yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they just were built out of clapboard, a lot of them. Yeah, pretty much so. And then <laughs> something else put on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So those, that's, a, you know, it's, it's similar underground, but the more water that goes underground uh, uh, and then the, the, the more serious uh, flooding that occurs, the greater the danger of problems. Yeah, yeah. Well, last winter was a tremendous uh, eye-opener, wasn't it? Well, the union caved in at the uh, boardroom level, which the county called me, and uh, it, it was the boardroom was 50 feet down in the union shaft. Wow. And uh, it caved in, so it caused the whole area to cave yeah. towards the cemetery. Well, we know that they have been known to have sinkholes up there oh, in Virginia yeah. City, right oh, in front yeah. of the grammar That's school there, right? right? In front of elementary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's very, it's very successful. seven cars. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the future of uh, the, the 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 Marshall Lode, the future of, of the Comstock, Virginia City, how does that look to you? How does that, are we are we going to uh, see more major discoveries up there? I see the Comstock Mining Company is, is there, but they don't seem to be doing a whole bunch right now. Well, they're into leaching of uh, low-grade gold ores. Uh -huh. low grade silver gold ores. Right. How about big companies like Barrick and and uh, du Dumont? What not Dupont? What's the name of that other one? Uh, but anyway, they're the big guys from the east side of Nevada. Any interest in them coming in and and they're getting quite involved? They're interested in I own. I own, which is a, a larger space. Well, it's right? a right undeveloped. This, space. this is a rare uh, deposit. Uh, how rare we don't know, but we know it is very rare. Yeah. So, uh, as we said, the, the, the major uh, professionals in the platinum field come from England. I see. Yeah, and always, <coughs> always have, and they're the major producers in South Africa, yeah. too. So, I yeah. just got to interject. Go ahead, though, Larry. The, the, yeah. the, as far as, like, the, the average person that lives in, in Reno now, they do not know where I own is. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yes. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. and anything beyond Fernley is, is like yeah. a mystery to them. You know, the, the yeah. other world ends there. Yeah. So, basically, what? Central? Believe it or not, from Virginia City to I own as the crow flies is only 65 miles. But if you want to drive there, it's 189 miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, around go back there. around the, the oh, Navy. Yeah. Base. yeah. yeah. That's true. Or go the other way down to Gaps yeah, or to and Gaps. make a left-hand turn yeah. there, right? Yeah. So, well, it is funny though that, that I mentioned this before. You know that that I've worked every small town in in the mm -hmm. I own Gaps. Uh, you know, Mina. Yeah. Mina, yes. Mina, yeah. yeah. There's and, lots of Minas. There's Mina in uh, in California too. There's I own in California. Yeah. In fact, yeah. it's in the wine country over there. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the future looks bright for. The Comstock. I think it looks very bright for the Comstock and for our whole area, basically, economically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, economically, our area is really thriving and it's going to thrive. It's a boom town. Yeah. It's a boom town again. It's, it's boom amazing town. what has happened, right, Uri? Mm -hmm. And Larry, since yep. 07, when we had that major downturn, you couldn't give away a house in those yeah. days. And, and it's the, space age development is what it is. Yeah. Well, Tesla yeah. and Panasonic. Even and our friend Peter, who has Padilla, know, born, yeah, born uh -huh. and, uh, deal with the uh, natural gas. And natural oil. gas and oil. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. A lot of entrepreneurs have established. Well, and there. as we often talk about, right? You're right. This mm -hmm. has been the history of Nevada, Larry. Right. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, California we, sliding into the ocean <laughs> after burning up yeah. or being flooded. Yeah. yeah. Well, now with these new tax laws, we're going to see a lot more. Oh, yeah. Of our wealthier residents oh, yeah. of California moving into yeah. Nevada, we don't have to do any special program for them. They're going to be coming in with a lot of money, a lot of investment, mm -hmm. and that's just going to make long term great for where we're at here in Nevada. Oh yeah, yeah. High, high tech is going to really thrive here, yeah, tremendously. Yeah. So, so the pride in Nevada is going to keep marching on, yeah. right? <laughs> we're just going to get better and better. There's a lot of things that hopefully that we will be able to show in, in time on our show that very few people have ever seen, like Area 51, for example. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, really, there's a, there's a good cheer there now. Yeah. And the government has it arranged pretty well to where we could do a show there. That's wonderful, yeah. yeah. Well, the military is such a big part of Nevada. It you is. Know? It <laughs> really is, yeah. It's a very important part. Big part of our economy. Yep. In fact, Nellis Air Force Base, I was watching the news last night, and they're doing some very special training mm -hmm. there. 
in connection with the North Korea mm -hmm. a problem. You know, they're training the troops that wow. are there. Mm -hmm. Helicopter entries and, you know, fighting ground troops. Uh, and they're preparing for the worst case scenario down there right here yeah. in Nevada. So yeah. that's how important we are, you know. Yeah. So we got gold, we got silver, we got platinum. Uh, yeah. Lithium is also huge. Mm -hmm. uh, our uh, retail sector is big. Our uh, industrial centers are just going nuts with new companies coming in. We have we have a great state and we have almost no people. Yeah. Three million people. <laughs> Only three million people. Yeah, we could we could handle a few people from yeah. California. Yeah, I don't know can. how many we want to yeah. take in. I think we ought to do a merit based Center immigration system. Ground. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Make sure they're the right kind of people for yeah, oh yeah, we don't need a bunch of fruitcakes. Yeah, yeah. fruitcakes. <laughs> Just a Christmas. Well, That's you it. know what happens, though, right? You know, people come from the big city, right? Yeah. And and they come to a place like Nevada, and we enjoy it because of the open spaces, mm. because of the freedom, a lack of regimentation, and regulation and do you get people from the big city and they want all of that stuff. they want all that regulation yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah i go back east to visit my folks right and it's an amazing thing they are so regimented mm -hmm. you know everything happens a certain way at a certain time and you cannot deviate from it. so i think what that does it restricts creativity it overpopulates our areas yeah. is what it's, what's what's happening. They almost like, or become robotic, mm -hmm. you know. And I like the idea of uh, Nevada because it allows you to open your mind to new ideas. It's a pioneer state. It's a pioneer state. It's Always still has a been a state. still pioneer yeah. state. You're one of them. Yeah. You know what you're doing up there yeah. in the Comstock and I own in other places with all your mining claims is is a pioneer spirit. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Entrepreneurial. That's right. Entrepreneurial, yeah. yes. And, and, and the politics of Nevada promotes that in the fact that there's no gerrymandering. It's all either in the north or in the south in the two districts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's none of this, you know, amoeba-looking stuff that they have, like, the, you know, back east. <laughs> back east, right. New yeah. York and everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, listen, you're right. We wish you the best with that endeavor up there. Yeah. And we well, love we being uh, it, with yeah. you to help you mm -hmm. along the way with the videos mm -hmm. and different marketing for the uh, new discovery, the Marshall Load. And it's nice to have our team together, Larry, with yeah. his musical interludes and mm -hmm. <laughs> creativity. Sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, sense of humor. Uh, well, we and, have a very historical show this made a, a historical discovery uh, even more important yeah. because it's, we have a show to show it exactly so yeah. so we have a we have a great crew that we work with every week uh, Caesar mm -hmm. Jim Webster Larry yeah. and our Eddie Floyd's another a good integral part of mm -hmm. our crew and uh, great to see it happening been working on it for a long time so congratulations yeah. on the Marshall load we'd we like to it. thank our audience that's been with us yeah. for so many years Most and continues definitely. to grow and we want to thank you for being with us this week and we want to invite you back next week for another episode of Old Tales of Nevada Past and Present in the meantime for Larry and for you Roy and myself yeah. Don O'Brien we'll see you next week on Old Tales of Nevada